and join us. Come and join us there. Um, you kind of, you were eating something, but uh, first of all, give us your name. Uh, Hat. Hat, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Margot. Hello, girls. Uh, welcome back. Uh, what are your names? Lapni. Lapni Vega. Lapni Vega. My name is Tawida. Tawida, okay. This is really interesting because I had an identical girl sitting here earlier and she didn't remember her name. But she looked very similar to you. But you're Ta Tanida. Tanida. Tanida, we've got her uh, and Lapni. Lapni. And we've got. Uh, are, are, are you. Will you give us your name? Hello, Larice, welcome. And we've got some more people coming in. Uh, so this is Robot Talk Show. Hello, welcome. If you find something you want to sit down on a table, you can. It's completely free. You can listen, you can talk, you can do all of the above. So the way Tokyoki works, people, is that it's up to you to decide on the subject that we should discuss. Come and join us, uh, by the way. Uh, what's your name? Ayo. Ayo, come and sit down. At the moment, we don't have a subject on the table. Haji, any subjects that you'd like to talk about? Music. Music, okay, what about, I mean, are you happy with the subject? Do you like music? I like machines. What's that? Machines. Is this, what, what do you mean? It's like uh, Arabic music. Okay, Arabic music, Muslim music, what? I mean, have you heard of this kind of music? Um, okay, how does it go? Like, what, what's, what's so typical about it? What, how does it, I mean, recently, uh, do, do, you, do you like music? Do you know much about music? Uh, I love music. I don't know much about Arabic music. Or Arabic music. I love to learn more. Okay, what's, can you tell us a little bit about it? Is, 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 what, is there anything in particular about it? Is it about the lyrics? Is it about the rhythm? Is it the language? What is it? They use a special gum sometimes. Uh, at the moment we're talking about uh, Arabic music. Do you know any Arabic music? Do you listen to any Arabic music? I love this headband by the way. Lovely, lovely look that uh, is there. Okay, so there's a drum. I mean, do you like drum music? What music do you like? Classic music. Classic music. Okay. Uh, Come and join us, you're welcome to join us, I have a little patch, uh, they're all here, they're all safe. Uh, hello, welcome back, uh, what kind of music do you like? Do you listen to music? Do you sing? Do you play instruments? Do you play drums? Okay, brilliant, so we're going to start to dance here. Um, uh, you're going to be doing all the instruments and singing. Uh, we're going to have a little bit Arabic influences, maybe we'll have this particular drum as well, Dad. Yeah. Um, but maybe we could change it up. Maybe we could have some classical music. Uh, what do you like about classical music? Uh, not really. Okay, so classical music is not too loud. Do you listen to uh, classical music? Okay. You, you listen to classical music, yeah? Do you have favourite composers? Yeah. Can you name any of them? Yeah. Good to know. Oh, hello, welcome. You place at the table, is it? Okay. You're welcome. I'm uh, uh, Margo. Uh, and there's everyone. Hello, welcome. We're just talking about music right now. Khadija just joined. Uh, we're talking about Arabic music. Uh, do you listen to Arabic music or do you prefer classical music? I can't hear. Do you prefer classical music? Singing? Yeah, go on, give us, give us a tune, give us a tune. Maybe later, maybe later. Uh, Khadija, do you listen to music? Do you like music? Okay. Um, what's your favourite type of music? Pop music. Uh, do you listen to pop music? Do you, do you listen to music? So what kind of music do you like? At the moment we're talking about um, Arabic, uh, kind of uh, Islam music, we've got classical music. Just, not, not as, uh, oh, are you going? Are you guys going? Give us your final thought. Give us your final thought before you go. Just anything, a message you want. Anything you want. Maybe later, maybe later. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for coming back. You can come back later if you want. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, you're welcome to. Hello, Khadija. You just need to hear. I like that. I, I really like that. Uh, well, let me see. This is a pop up talk show. Uh, what are you looking for? You can make up a name, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to say my actual name. My name is Lily. Lily, welcome Lily. Uh, who else have we got around the table? Have we got these people here? Joe. Joe, nice to meet you, Joe. Diana, I'm the Mokta. Mokta, love your names. Uh, come and grab a seat at the top of your feet. What's your name? Thank you. Emily, welcome. Hello. Uh, okay, so at the moment we're talking about music. Uh, do you guys listen to music? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Khadija, you like uh, pop music, you like classical music. What music do you like? Jazz. Jazz, okay. I like K-pop. K-pop, jazz. Yeah, grab a seat, everyone. Uh, anyone's welcome at this time. Yeah, Kijimbo, you're welcome to come back as well. Come and grab a seat. Talk about music. Uh, do you have a favourite type of music? Kind of music, so you're here with Khadija, okay? Uh, hello, people. Uh, what are your names? We're just doing some like, friends and ladies. Raif. Raif, eh? My name is Tasma. Tasma, nice to meet you. Uh, at the moment, we're talking about music. We've got jazz, we've got pop music. There's quite a lot of fans of pop music. Uh, we've got new friends around the table. What's your name? My name is Khadija. Hey, Khadija. Uh, so, classical, jazz, pop music. What music do you guys listen to? I like jazz, the best because it's uh, yeah, fun to have. Uh, also, in the other time, it's like, they're so nice. Yeah. And. So, jazz, jazz is the answer. Yeah. Okay, uh, what about yourself? Do you like jazz? Our sound effects kind of was working. We, yeah, it's not working currently, it's just having a little rest. I think it's just having up. Uh, we have some jazz music queued up. What is about all these different types of music? Is there much music happening uh, here in the... Uh, oh wow, there's ice cream happening right now. Uh, is there much music happening in, in East London? Are you guys... Do you guys play music or do you listen to music? Do you play music? Uh, yes. What instrument do you play? Piano. Okay, okay. Uh, I play recorder. Okay. And you just... I play... Uh, the xylophone? Wow. Do you play instruments? Okay, so xylophone as well. Okay. Any, any more people who play instruments or have tried playing instruments? Have you played any instruments? If you wanted to learn an instrument, what kind of instrument do you think? Oh, I like the sound of that. Okay, so... Yeah. I don't want to play the music, but I listen to it, but... Glockenspiel, where is this name coming from? Like Glockenspiel, where is this instrument from? It's a very intriguing yeah. name. Do, you, do we know where, where it comes from? I can tell you that Glockenspiel and guitar and keyboard as well. Okay guys, so I think what we've got going here is like we could really easily, like right now, start a band. Right? Uh, because people here around this table play a lot of instruments. Do you guys play any instruments? Do you listen to music? The violin. The violin, okay. Yeah. Is he around? Is he available no. to, for a calling of the band? I'd love to hear what they're saying about music. Yeah. Come on, let me see the sound works. Come and, uh, Shall I come and sit down? Yeah, come and sit down. Just pop a chair. If you can't see a chair available, just pull oh, one from absolutely anywhere. Wow, suddenly we've got hundreds of hosts. I remember you girls. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. 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 Uh, I really like you both versions actually, so there you go. Okay, shall we just do a round of names, just very quickly, just to warm everyone up, yeah? Okay. Stretchy. Stretchy, is that it? Lily. And Margaret, and we've got Laura on the visualizations. She has been making some of the drawings um, from today's conversations. And we've got uh, Larise on your uh, camera. Right, so at the moment, we're talking about music. And we can take this conversation in whatever direction we want to. Where do people learn playing instruments in, in Bromley? Is Bromley by Bell a good place to start a band? That's what we're talking about. Uh, my uh, auntie works here. Okay. 
by you? Do you work here? Why are you here today? Okay, and was it a good choice? Was, did she give you a good recommendation? Are you enjoying yourself? Okay, anyone else here uh, enjoying themselves? Yeah? My mum's a uh, member of the Bombay Bible Centre, so yes. she, she did updates on a lot of things on the centre. So I, I can come here when I want. Okay, so it's open doors. I mean, have you have you got any recommendations as to what is the best thing here today? Um, what what have you enjoyed doing today so far? Uh, have you done anything that you thought? Oh, that's great. That's quite cool. I quite enjoy. Uh, I still think. Okay. There's a vertical castle. Okay, vertical castle. Okay, you know what, guys? Actually, I'm happy to have my cycling before you. I've got uh, the bouncy castle with the most fun day today so far. Right. Okay, so bouncy castle is a big win. I mean, did you? What did you enjoy today? Uh, of course. I mean. It, Absolutely. Uh, what about yourself? Have you enjoyed anything here today? I've been following Lily when she wants to go. So you are the guide. You are telling her where to go and what to do. Okay. How are your impressions so far? Okay. okay. Goodbye. Give us your final thought, Nick. Uh, uh, I like his name because he was sitting here earlier, so it's not cool. Uh, R E S P E C T is what I learned from that last, okay. the last one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, spelling. Just keep spelling, <laughs> spelling things out and spelling things. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, okay, uh, okay, so Bouncy Castle. Uh, also, it's interesting how people found out about this place. It's through your mom, it's through. Uh, yeah? Okay, posters outside, yeah? Uh, and, yeah. So, I mean. Maybe I could do like a little rerun and a recap for you of what we have been talking about today. We have been doing that cycling, we have been talking about things that people do here to keep themselves uh, happy. Actually, we're talking about happiness. Are you living your dream? That was one of the questions on the table. Is it easy to live your dream in Bromley? Yeah. Yeah? Lots of things that we need. Which one we need? Oh, oh, have a seat. Uh, yes, that's you. Uh, you put this. Uh, yeah, can I get involved? Uh, yeah, that's right. You put the right uh, attitude and nice, nice shirt as well. Very summery. And you've got what's this in your hand? Is it flower? What's that? Okay, right. Uh, what have you got? What, what is this? Is like some kind of headgear. Okay, people. So, uh, okay, so Bromley by Bo, good place for children and the little older children, a little bit older children still. Uh, pretty good place. Maybe not me. More like a gaming person. Okay, you're a gaming person. So, is there enough gaming going on in Bromley by Bo right now? Uh, what kind of gaming would you like to see? Well, online gaming. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you. Yeah, I agree. I used, I, I used to play this game for Roblox. You can do really anything, and there's Minecraft as well. Minecraft sucks. Okay, uh, okay, who thinks, who knows what Minecraft is? Do, do you know? What is it? How do you explain it? Uh, so it's Okay. You it's, can, uh, it's a building slash adventure game. Yes, it's a building and slash adventure game. Okay. Um, you can play. You can build things with your friends. You can um, play games to your friends, and you can play online with other people, and, and you can really do anything. Uh, are you are you sold? Are you, do, do you feel like you are encouraged uh, to play Minecraft? So so every time you make a different name, I just have to be prepared, right? Okay. <laughs> so listen, so okay, so gaming, I mean okay, so it sounds like a not bad game, right? You just like building stuff, you can play with your friends, um, you can connect online, like what would you do? Hardcore mode, like if you die, they gave you hardcore. 
Okay, if you die in the game, you cannot be reborn. So it's just like Beast life Lord. as well. Oh, Beast Lord. It's, it's, it's survival mode. You have, you have to build the house and you have to technically beat the game, which is killed and killing the ender dragon in the end. No, it's not. It's completely all the achievements. Okay, uh... Well, like there's like bronze achievement, there's like the silver, and then the black, there's a platinum one. When you complete all the trophies, you get this trophy. Okay, okay, so at the moment, hello, welcome. This is a pop-up talk show. We're just talking about whatever people want to talk about. As it happens, the moment as you enter, come and have a seat. Um, we're talking about gaming. Uh, what do you mean? Shirley is literally just uh, zoning out. What, what's We're happening? We're just learning something here, aren't we? So what do you want to play? And me, I don't play no games. I just... Don't know. Okay, okay, okay. So talking about games and playing games and learning about uh, online gaming. Are you an online gamer? Have you tried that before? Inside the game, you play. You're not looking at me. I've done five years. I've done five years. I'm not so good. 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 So what do you guys think of this idea? Oh, really? What's your name? Martha. Martha, welcome. And Margot, uh, we've got Mo. Uh, it was something else before. Uh, who am I meaning? Lily. Lily, Emily, Hal, uh, Shirley, and... Lily. Lily. That one, Lily. Okay. Uh, and we've got Laura there doing the uh, visualization. Do you, okay, does it get confusing? What is it? Lily? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so Martha here is saying a lot of people can join us just talking about the gaming and actually, uh, so your grandchildren play the games, but you don't get involved. I mean, can, can, is there any way of getting Shirley and Martha involved in gaming? Or it's just like, you just gotta know, you just have to know some oh, basic God. stuff. I, I, I'm if I want my granddad to play games, <laughs> I'm gonna say, oh, there's porn on it, there's porn.
Actually, we have been talking about architecture around here. We're talking about different places, the blue plaques and the history. But you're saying, actually, just kind of rewind a little bit. You're talking about maybe there's something that people can do together. Look up where you want to go, use your computer, use the technology, but actually do go out there and, and go for it. I mean, are you, are you, you wanted to say something? Are you encouraged to go on the, on to a walk? Would you go for a walk? Yeah. What, why? What would make it, why, what would make you want to go? Anything maybe happen? Okay, so maybe, so maybe if we use computer to uh, connect with people far away, uh, maybe that's a good way to get you out of the house and walking. I mean, like, what, 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 what do you think about this kind of like doing things actively? Maybe can you play Minecraft in real life? Uh, kind of. It's confusing. It's because I saw YouTubers trying to do Minecraft in real life. Like, like that, and like Minecraft people real life stuff is like not good. Okay, what? Well, I mean, what do you think about this idea of like playing like old, old school games? Yeah, I mean, would you like to learn that? Have you ever played dance? 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 Or pool? Which one do you prefer? Dance. Okay, uh, can you do dance around here? How do you go to do dance? You know, actually, we're talking about this. Like, how do you kind of get the mobile games out into real life? Does it actually even work? I don't know if you're familiar with Minecraft. Have you ever played Minecraft? Okay, well, uh, maybe someone can explain what Minecraft is. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, what is the. Are we just living in two separate worlds? There's the online world. Which one is, by the way, just about online world. Uh, do you live more in the real world or an online world? Is the question we take. Uh, do you have any good? Uh, I mean, what, what about you guys? I mean, do you feel like you spend more time in the virtual world or in the real life world? Virtual. You can do whatever you want. Okay, virtual. What about you? The real world. going on walks, uh, are you part of any kind of like walking groups or whatever, but also we're talking about online world and online gaming and which world do you live in more, uh, are you more like, uh, yeah. how are, you? Uh, are you more in the online world, uh, and what about your children, if you have any children, do they, where do they live? Uh, so this is kind of what we're doing. Um, I'm a 50-50, so I live between both worlds. I, use, I definitely think that the nature and the natural world outside of tech is good, but we have to take the impact of the tech for all the things that it has provided us so far. So we can't say we, you know, we can live without because we're so engrossed in it. We have to live within it. Uh, but we need to get it. Yeah. I mean, so tech, we have things to be grateful for. Uh, to tech. I mean, do you agree with that, Martha? I mean, are you grateful? Uh, is technology helping you? And well, I was just thinking under the Portland Road, there's so many old buildings out there. I think what we need to do is teach the youngsters as well as ourselves the natural history of where that building the Jews were. But somebody kind of did it. I told you all, St. Clements, centuries ago, it used to be a workhouse. And, uh, and when I was growing up, it was known as the planet. Maybe, I mean, could, could, could we introduce some of the kind 
of local heritage and like history into gaming or I don't know. Yeah. There's only one that house I can think of. School. Yes, school, okay. What about the I mean do you like the building of the school? Um no. No, because everywhere I see is cobwebs, cobwebs, cobwebs. In the bathroom, there's a, in the toilet, there's a cobweb, and I, I'm not going in there. I literally, I don't, I just don't like my school list because it's like very old, like World War Two old. Is that a bit too old for a school building? Kind of. It's because my school's old palace primary, and. In World War Two, it was used as um, it was used as a fire department, and about like about thirty more than thirty one people the firemen died, and, and I feel like the bathrooms haunted because of that. Okay, so you think there's quite a lot. I went to All Palace Primary, and we were told that it was haunted as well. But I think um, that's just a myth. Um, but I think having a school that's uh, linked to your history. It's something to be quite proud of. So, yeah, my school was part of the history and it was used as a shelter. I think it's a great thing to be proud of. Okay, um, and, and what about these cobwebs? Like, what is that about? Is it like, it's just spiders? Yeah. Spiders are falling about everywhere. The minute I turn my head, I see a cobweb. In the bath, in the, in the playground toilet, the bath, and the first toilet, there, there was a spider there. No girl went in there. It was like about this big. It took about three weeks for it to leave. Right, so I mean, how important is like the atmosphere? I feel like the cobweb was maybe like adding to the atmosphere of like an old building, haunted building. Uh, but it's something actually, what you're saying is like uh, uh, the primary school, because it's a historical building, and you seem to know quite a lot about it. Maybe because you're a tour guide or something, I don't know, of the haunted places. Uh, I mean, you know, so, that, so there's something you're proud of in the terms of local history. I mean, like, do you know much about history uh, in your area? I mean, you know, do you know much about the history of your school? It was built in 1985. Right. And um, it, it was named for a rich man and woman to live in there. Okay. But, but then over the years it was converted into school. I mean, like, do you like it? And how, what's the atmosphere like in your school, uh, this is what we're talking about right now. Is it is it good, friendly, haunting, do you have many cobwebs, uh, do you enjoy being there? I enjoy being there, but I enjoy being outside. Okay, so cobwebs are just like a feature of, um, of bathrooms in a school. No, not, not where you go to school. Um, I'm going to you and everything is all full. Okay, so we're talking about school buildings. Is your school too formal? Is the school building a little bit haunted? Do you have many cobwebs? Uh, but what is it about this kind of I'm interested in the formal. In my school, on the where, my, where the year fours classes, the year fours and fives and six classes, and the toilet there next is the girls' toilet. It's like about what's the corridors the head teacher, uh, one of the um, like about like a head teacher's office, like from there. Uh, and in the toilet, the, the, there's a vent, and it's broken, and it creeps almost every girl out. And the other other vent in there is open. Okay, so maybe your school needs to be a bit more kind of like girl safe, like you know, just don't don't freak people out. Are you and okay? Because they need to. Okay. If you bring something up to their attention, they should do something. And maybe even include, I don't know whether they do, is how you look at the same look after yourself, get rid of that spider and that it could help with your life if you can ask them how to help yourself for the future. Whether it be like pick it up and throw it out, or whether it be like get a spider. To be able to know what to do, making sure you know how to do, and I 
think the headmistress should be able to pull a finger out and do something for him. Okay, so we're saying, okay, so maybe uh, it's school is also, I'm going to paraphrase some of the things that you said, one of them being, uh, should school teach us how to dispose of spiders safely? in a way that's happy for the spider, in a way that's not too freaky for her pigs to have. I mean, are you scared of spiders? No. Uh, how, how did you get to love spiders? Have you always loved them? Yeah. Okay, and what is it about spiders they particularly love? Because they don't even bite, and people think that they're green, but I think they're nice because they don't, they don't harm you. And even poison ones. So, uh, Lily here has got this problem with her school, right? Maybe you could give some advice. There are some spiders, there's lots of cobwebs. You can kind of see, we're just having a conversation. And, uh, we're just, uh, at the moment, trying to work out how to kind of improve Lily's school situation, which is infested with spiders and cobwebs. Uh, but what's her name? Yes, so her. Listen, so you are very good with spiders, you love spiders. So how could you give Lily advice? How to get rid of spiders in her school? How can she do it? Okay, and that's it, that solves the problem out. I mean, do you feel a bit more kind of safe you now that you know this kind of method? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not really good with spiders, I don't really like them. Even if it's that small, I will scream. But my friend Arissa, she's a Muslim like me, she's obsessed with spiders. And then I, I, I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, oh my god. She literally says, if there's a spider, don't kill it, don't kill it, let it be. So she there's a literal spider in my, in my living room, and it's in the corner, and I can't reach it. Okay, so I mean, you believe it or not, this is the first talk here at the, uh, around Down Hammers they're doing this month. And actually spiders came up before, didn't they, uh, Laura? There you go, we've got a spider over there. Uh, that's one of the early ones, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, I've remade it because uh, Australian people can open that connection. So I'm a Caucasian woman, I'm a Caucasian woman, was about a bright spider jumping in space and okay. now spiders are back at school. Try this hot spot again there, Laura Mandel help. But okay, but one of the questions, more importantly, I think you kind of threw that in, Martha, is that is school teaching us the right skills? Does the school actually teach us how to love spiders? How to dispose of them safely? And also, what's in it? Anyway, what do you think about this thing about school? I mean, do you feel like school is teaching you the right things? But I thought Okay, so teachers maybe are not putting enough effort into education, Martha, you agree, but you had your hand up here. Um, I'm homeschooled. Is it okay? I'm homeschooled. You're homeschooled, okay. So how, how does that compare? I mean, do you know how it compares? Like, what, what do you do in your uh, school day? Do you sometimes feel like, maybe in Lewis' experience, teachers are not doing enough? Do you feel like your home teacher is doing enough to teach you? Yeah. Can, can they improve? Okay, I mean, what kind of things uh, do you learn in your homeschooling days? Poetry, science, yeah. and football, but now football is done and culture. Okay, so poetry, football, science, I mean, is this like a common thing to be learning at school? What do you, what do you learn at school? Science, English, math. Is it football, how to play football? Is it history of football? Is it awareness of football? Is it? No, it's just in there. Okay, how to play it and stuff. Okay, right. Do you know anything about this homeschooling thing? Yeah, my children. <laughs> oh, really? And I'm the teacher, the teacher. Okay. So you got some feedback here. Yeah? <laughs>
Um, do you find it then? Um, homeschooling um, is, it gives me an opportunity to kind of see where my children are at with learning um, on a one to one basis. I too, you know, when we, um, as a group of mums, uh, we teach our children. So one of the maths lessons I conducted by myself. Um, got poetry run by one of the teachers who are uh, moms that are really really into poetry so she so it's a bit more each, each teacher parent teacher is gives what they're dedicated to so it gives their all and the groups are a lot smaller so we've got a group of eight children and next this summer we will have after the summer we'll have a group of ten children so again it's a very small group out uh, with one teacher and it's a lot more one-to-one -one. and it kind of uh, allows us to kind of teach what we want to do um, whatever topics that the children are interested in so literally we literally do what the children are asking us if they ask us to do division or something division or if they want to do a certain type of poetry or parks or so we do a lot of nature walks because um, we run nature walks on Thursday so we take the children out through nature we come here we explore we take them to different parts of the areas um, so we kind of incorporate geography, history, um, art. So sometimes we sit and we look at a tree and say, okay, let's draw it. And that's art for you and nature and all in one. That's not as good as you. And it can be done in two hours. You don't have to sit at the school for six hours. Okay, I mean, right. So this, is, this sounds like a pretty comprehensive uh, schooling uh, program. I really like this. Uh, you just follow uh, what people want to learn and you just teach them that. Uh, has anyone ever asked for learning about divisions? Anyone like actively wanted to learn maths? Yeah? What's your favourite thing about maths? Uh, to learn a lot and it can help you in your Okay, uh, right, so uh, by the way, uh, I'm going to take this as a cue to uh, do a round of names because we've got some new names, uh, uh, probably new names, because we've got new people, that's kind of how it goes usually. Um, around the table. So this is Tokyo. Okay, what's your name? Abdul. 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 Uh, and the building being a little bit old, a little bit haunted, uh, apparently it's true, because uh, we recognise, you know this building. But then kind of moved on, started talking about what people learn at school, we're talking about, you know, maybe teachers, this is a teachers, maybe they don't do enough to engage the pupils, they can improve. Actually, this is your impression as well, you're homeschooled. Uh, sounds like you're doing a lot, but there's still room for imp improvement. Uh, and there's this whole thing of like following people's interests in deciding uh, what they should learn next at school. So this is where we're at, this is Tokyoki. Um, and yeah, I mean like, how, how was your time at school, Abba? Did you enjoy yourself? My time was positively different, you know. Yeah. I grew up in uh, 1989, mm -hmm. so I was in uh, 1987. Right. Did you grow up here? Uh, Basically, first I was in the Holland Park, and yeah, the school, and so I went for a school. Yeah. And that's it. So it was different. Did you do poetry and football? Did you do poetry about football? Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did? Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so things have changed slightly. Maybe people are teaching uh, or are learning uh, um, different things now as opposed to back in the day. Like, what about you, Shuri? I mean, like, how was your time at school? What did you learn? Like, have you had any favourites? I grew up in the same place. Generations just more clever than the older generation. 
because, you know, GCSE is a holiday, you guys just smash out of the park. I mean, do you feel like you're cleverer than the older generation? And then I'm going to come back to you. Can I just say something about my year 4 teacher? Yeah. Um, she so, okay, it's the same space. In winter, um, my, my year 4 teacher, he opened every single window. And when one, one person opts for... Hi, welcome to Tokyo. You can grab a seat and join in. Uh, when one person opts just for one window to be closed, the teacher says no, no, because of COVID. And I'm like, and I'm like the COVID, there's windows there, they're open. We don't need a thousand windows open. Like the wall is just, one of the walls on the left hand side is covered in windows. Okay, maybe we need to take a note of your school and just like write them a letter or maybe send them an online message, I don't know, uh, about all the kind of improvements they can make. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, so the question on the table is like, do you guys feel more clever than the older generation? No, 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 I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say perhaps how this is an impression into learning. Yes, I definitely think the younger generation are much older, therefore they're given a higher challenge than ourselves. Um, even as a homeschooler, I can tell you that sometimes I'm relearning stuff. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, I don't really know this bit. I've never learned it myself. So, hats off to these guys. But the, as a homeschooler, I mean, it kind of takes that pressure off the children. They're being, yeah, competing. You know, they can be, you go by their own pace and that's what you're homeschooling. Can I ask you a question? What is your favourite subject that you maybe recently rediscovered or, and now are teaching to the kids? Poetry. Okay. Yeah, I'm really poetry and different styles and the children write their own poems. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, so this is kind of a conversation for you. First round table, what's your name? Fatima. Fatima, welcome. Uh, this is Tokyo. Okay, remember we're talking about homeschooling, schooling at school. Uh, the fact that the current generation is more clever, cleverer, I should probably say, uh, than the older generation. Things used to be different, Abdul says. Um, uh, you know, education has to change. Maybe uh, there's a lot of competition in, in a form. Your school is very formal. Uh, so, do you guys feel like there's a lot of competition in your school? Good? Uh, yeah, but there's a lot of like to do school, there's like lots of it. Yeah, lots of us, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of us, but like, you can do that. Like, tennis, you must do basketball, yeah. tennis, football, basketball, every design, all your kids, like sign up. Yeah. Okay, so it's quite easy to do this. Yeah, it gives you like a timetable. Yeah. But do you feel like your school is competitive? Do you feel like you need to compete against other students with your mom? I'm going to unite at my Tuesday birthday for the So, I'm going to go back to my school. They think it's really easy, but it's not everyone. But when I go to my exams, I'm going to get under the one, but then I always say, sure, yes. Yeah. That's the least you must be doing. Absolutely, you just have to try your best and like do as you can. Um, but it sounds like it make it a little bit kind of uh, pressure. Um, and I do scouts too. Okay, do you have time to do scouts? But I mean, of course you do because actually all the classes are condensed into two hours, so you don't sit at school all God knows how many hours. Uh, and then you've got time for scouts. Are you enjoying? Yes, scouts is one of my favorite. Okay, uh, anybody else here dabbled in scouts, scouting, scouting? No, uh, what, what have you done at school that you enjoyed, if anything? Lots of hard work, days and my time. The same Okay. Okay. So I mean, this, uh, so so is playtime that's just something that's important? In, in, is it, you know? Yeah. Definitely, I think uh, playtime is very important. I think you need more play them to sit and learn because that makes you kind of learn more. You can take your children shopping and get them to do the shopping, make it into a fun thing and then, then you see that they've learned adding and writing and taking away it all at the same time. So you, we need to learn, we need to make the children kind of do real life things and scouting kind of offers that. Okay. And I'm a leader. 
Oh, you're a leader? Yeah. Okay, okay, so you are like a real all-rounder. Which scout division uh, do you uh, do? Seventh New Amsterdam scouts. Okay. Uh, amazing. Uh, Shirley, give us your final thoughts. Uh, I mean, do you, do you feel like you're having fun as a grown-up? Um, as a grown-up, of course. Life is, every day is a blessing and um, it's exciting and um, you just get on with life, I guess. And, um, yeah, life is fun. Like, do you play as, as a Well, I'm a um, SEMH TA, like I work with children in the media. So, yeah, over the years I've seen like, it's a blessing to work with these sort of children and um, I wasn't aware of it. I don't know, it's a big thing for me, but I wasn't aware of it until now and um, so I just noticed how they think and we think in the world and world to get it and um, it's just a person working with them and um, like I said, play, play is the key to learn, learning. Can I ask you a question? I mean, would you be able to give us an example of like what other kind of, you know, what, what kind of opened your eyes to um, these kids doing things differently and oh, actually, well, I started off with mainstream and then um, I went into ATC and they put me put into a school that has special needs for children with SCMH and um, yeah, and once I went in there I thought I'm not going back to mainstream high school. These, these children are so, you know, extraordinary and um, yeah, and I, I've been working for the last 15 years with those particular children and it's amazing. Sorry, I'm just going to agree on this, like what, what is it about their way of doing things that just really kind of you know, that is really different to mainstream. Are, are the mainstream people like doing it like wrong in a way? Can they improve? Oh, definitely. I mean, mainstream schools don't understand to where these children are coming from, and they don't have the facilities to actually um, cope or work, work with these children. So that's why these provisions that we provide for those children is completely different. And when they're in one small group, they feel like they've got a group of, you know, there's more understanding. Whereas mainstream, you're an outsider, they don't feel they're part of the school. I've seen it, it just doesn't work. So. Okay, so smaller groups of people feel like they were like actually some time ago, and we're happy talking about the sense of belonging and what makes that. Somebody says it's about the people, and then you know that you get to uh, Are you going? Uh, where are you going? To uh, my family. Fine. And do you have any final thoughts for us? Anything on this table that you, we discussed? Anything that uh, you enjoy or what you want to kind of throw in more? What's, it? What's the one thing we're going to walk away with? The, about the game. Okay. So still on gaming, okay. Can you play piano in the, the virtual world? Uh, yes. And do you do it? Uh, no. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, okay, so this is an interesting conversation on mainstream education. Uh, I'll come to you, Martha, because I kept on saying. Uh, yeah, I think like, with the mainstream, they could do more. But all you're getting is excuses, they run out of money. But what you need is that to give the, the youngsters a choice, and that it could be a hobby. But I didn't know the scouts were still going. And, that, and as a kid, yes, you had the scouts, but you also ran them. I believe they're all called different names now, but you need to have something like that. That is, when I say big, a lot of people go to, they get involved, in, and uh, because something like that can also help you learn. And that, uh, because as I say, I'm saying earlier, with my disability, there is a group that we meet up, and unless you get talking about these things, you're not going to learn. And that uh, it could be your medication, how it affects you, uh, or it could be if you need to talk with something in particular. And that because I know as a fact, a friend they were saying about money and their health be there, like, and they asked me what I was getting. I didn't know I was even in to help. And that something like that goes word of mouth. And that so so at the end of the day, you do need some things given to the youngsters, give them their choice. They might be interested in going. It could be to a sports, like a peak fit, or to sort of how to stand up for yourself. And you do need something like that because with the, what I'm saying here, because that's what we called it, you had a choice not just football because to be quite truthful they need to 
stop that and that because that's all you're going to see on the TV. Yes, it's, everybody gets involved, like the youngsters, but you need to give them something more than that. And that, because you've got the athletes, they, you see them, but you don't see them on the TV, unless it's like the Olympics or something like this. And then they wonder why some of the youngsters, they might be for us, they might be for somebody else, a different country. Oh, they did too well. Or what's that? They go on and then they just don't leave them alone. Yeah. And that's but what you need is some of the young ones, even to give them the chance to give their choice. Okay, so I think this is very interesting point. It's about a choice. I mean, uh, do you feel like you have got enough choice? And that's my question to you guys, the younger generation, to the older generation as well. Like, do you feel like you've got choice? Uh, and and is it uh, is it true that if you don't see other sports on TV? That means you're not going to take them up, you're not going to know, you're not going to be interested. If it's football, football, then... I knew about basketball without them, um, going on the TV. And I know about football. Even though um, my older brother loves watching FIFA and football, um, I, I, I like basketball more than football, and my brother said basketball was rubbish. But I really like it, and I thought it was I've got a question for you, uh, though, really. I mean, as a young uh, girl, do you feel like you've got choices in life? Or is it more like parents, school telling you the choices? Um, sometimes parents, sometimes uh, iPad, but mostly parents. Okay, and how do you feel about that? Is that kind of. No, um, when my mum chooses something for me, um, my mum knows um, what's best, and so I. So she chooses. Okay, so your mum is kind of giving you good guidance as to what is good, choice, she's giving you the options. Uh, I mean, anyone can hear that? Um, I want to talk about you. Oh, no. Um, a good thing? Does everybody have those choices? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like I don't want to go to school on Mondays. Um, and normally on other days, I feel like uh, uh, school. But I just don't like Mondays. Not just because it's on Monday. It's because I have swimming on Monday. I like to swim. It's just um, the TA, the teacher's assistant, Miss Bagan, is really strict. She times us to get changed. And until we get changed, then we can have a conversation with our friend. And there's like, we have to separately do a, a girl's room and then a boy's room to get changed. And so, um, and, and everyone, all, go, all the girls in my class are chatting. So, um, she, and plus she acts like she's the teacher. And I just don't like her at all. She's absolutely the worst TA ever. Good thing I'm going to your five so I don't see her. Okay, so Mondays, a fear of Mondays, I guess uh, it's not an uncommon thing to not like Mondays, but there are different reasons why we don't like Mondays. Uh, do you like Mondays? Richard, yeah. What was it about Mondays that you'd recommend? Football, okay. Uh, have you ever had, what about teachers in your school when you were at school? Were your teachers strict or were they like chill? but it was a bit of a mix, yeah? Okay, anyone else? I mean, can you relate to this? And also, what is this business with teaching assistants? I don't know if you've got teaching assistants. Where you got to get? I do like, I do like school. I like school and I don't like Louis, let me just pause you here. Uh, because you're going, you're leaving us. Uh, but the rule on the cookie table is you give us your final thoughts. If you, if you want to, obviously. Uh, I think this was a great show and uh, the fact that we got to speak to children and adults all that one, so yeah, it was great, thank you. Oh, fantastic, thank you so much for stopping by and finding so much into the conversation. We have been actually talking to, I think, the sixth Scouts division. It's a girl called Um who was running it, but I think she moved on, but we can do this for Scouts for free, so uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, just drop us a line, but I'd love to connect. Uh, awesome, thank you so much. Enjoy your rice and your Ben and Jerry's. Um, yes, Louis, coming back to you and your what you were saying. School, yeah. Yeah, school. Mm -hmm. like, school. Mm -hmm. I've, I've made some more mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Do you like school? Uh, is, does the school uh, do its job? C can you learn and have fun at the same time? Yeah, you can ha have fun and learn. Yeah. Do you do that in your school time? Yeah, yeah like we have fun activities and like we. Our teachers are uh, strict when they need to be, but not strict all the time. So they can still have a laugh and joke around with you, but you can't like be too. So kindness and, and good behaviour and manners, we do have manners and uh, goes a long way. But I mean like why do teachers, why is it always with teachers, they have to be strict? Uh, and so my new teacher for year 5, her name is Miss Matten, she's really kind but sometimes she needs to be strict, it's only when, the, only when people don't pay attention. She's being reasonable but Miss Pega, she's strict no matter what. Strict for no reason. I mean, you're kind of like hanging in there, uh, listening maybe. I mean, uh, have you had strict teachers or chill teachers when you went to school? Are you maybe at school now? I don't know. Uh, you know, just don't know these things. We have all sorts of teachers. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm from DLR basically, and we promote a few schemes on DLR. And uh, one of the schemes is back on track. So, we're helping people, the communities to come. Um, helping anxiety, anxiety, we have travel issues, we have 
and sort of issues um, that are difficult to carry the train. So we help those people so it's completely free in this team so they can uh, sign up with us and we can take them to the trip. Uh, our health community nurse assess them and take them to the trips. We are that we are helping the communities with their schools, nurseries, uh, community groups, councils, and especially after COVID, difficult with anxiety, travel issues. This is actually really brilliant because I, I, I personally, I know I'm not supposed to have opinions, but I love DLR. It's one of my favourite trends uh, because it looks like it's from the fairground. So uh, if I could have any feedback to DLR people, just put some balloons there because they'll be just like more fun. Okay, could you do that? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, are, are you guys, I mean, is that useful? It is because I took a black hat and I ended up saying, and you know, it popped up, and I, that's where I took, and there was at least two people to do with the DLR that helped me, and, uh, and they were talking to me, and I was coming around, and, uh, and there's been loads of other times I've had a black hat, but it's been passengers that have helped me, and, uh, but yeah, because I've gone to groups, and you get the DLR people, we have an age group to call a lot but there'll always be a school for DLR, and that, and other different groups, and that. But you wouldn't know about them unless you went to these groups. So you might so, so, so need to do something in the school to learn about a disability. Yeah. They might already be living the same thing, and that. But it would be helpful between first aid as well as to learn how to help that other person. The other thing is to know how to ID it. <laughs> Okay, but for you, it's like a word of mouth to find out about issues like this one. And also, do you know uh, enough about disabilities? I don't know. Do you guys know much about disabilities just in general in your schools? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I am. I'm a Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, thank you. That I thought not littering very, very nice. So this is uh, our first little kind of like foray into the sign language. Thank you for this little demonstration. Um, I mean, uh, Lily, what would you make of this? Uh, do you know much about sign language? I mean, uh, would you know where to get help if you needed to at school? Do you have any friends with disabilities in your school? Um, oh, give us a final thought. Anything, anything. Uh, anything you're going to come away thinking? What have you been doing? Any messages to the world? Beautiful. There's always light, uh, so whatever you're going through, do not despair. There'll be something good. There'll be light at the end of it. Just look ahead, and it'll be there. Fantastic. Thank you, Louis. Thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, okay, so we've got the, the sign language. We've got good to meet you in sign language. But yeah, uh, Lily. I mean, yeah. So do you have any uh, any um, friends that you have or disabilities in where you? Um, I don't have friends that have disabilities, and I don't know sign language. But there's this person in my class named Mum who's disabled and he can't really talk. And and he's almost all the time he's playing with Legos, and he's like does basic stuff like maths, just like simple questions, and English and topics like easier questions to the questions we have. And there's another person in the other class that's in the same year who's named Tamim. Mohan and Tamim are friends, they always play with labels and they do simple stuff, like simple questions, easier questions to the questions that the rest of the class has. So they kind of, uh, so, but I, I really love this idea of using Lego at school. Do you, guys, uh, do you use Lego at school? Yeah, I believe we will like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, this is a pop-up talk show, so as long as you can or want to. Uh, we've got Lily, we've got Martha, we've got Larissa, we've got Laura, uh, and Laura Gomes. Do you have your name? Megan. Anonymous, anonymous, maybe later we'll come back to you. Hello, what's your name? Sapphire. Sophia, Nikas, and Snappers. Snappers, okay. Right, listen, so uh, we have been talking about lots of different things. We started talking about spiders in your school, then we're talking about um, different old buildings, because your building is quite old. It's old. We're talking about different buildings around the boat area, how it's all changed. Then we're talking about gaming, we're talking about um, uh, Minecraft a little bit. Uh, come try to kick, by the way, love your high vis. Uh, it's okay, we don't mind high vis. This is high vis work, the same book. You're welcome to sit down and join in. Um, we're talking about gaming, we're talking about do you live more in the virtual world, or the real life world. Uh, you know, what about people who are not on social media and not uh, engaged in technology? Are they just kind of like, 
you know, it's like uh, left behind. Then we talked about uh, education, and we were talking about homeschooling. We had somebody here uh, perform a group of teachers with their parents, and we were talking about, uh, you know, do we actually need to stay so long at school? It's okay, just like, oh, you're going. What's your final thought? Uh, so my final thought is that um, one time in school, I'm not good in maths, I'm, but I'm really good in maths. The teacher got a simple question wrong, and I uh, I went up and corrected him, and it was so funny. It was this year. Okay. Well, thank you, lady, for uh, putting so much interest to keep your mind. Uh, the other thing we were talking about is is the current generation more clever than the older generation? I think uh, yeah, they're getting better, obviously. But I know, like with my epilepsy, we may have at least.
you want to go and enjoy yourself, I don't want to be asked to be here. Very much so. Because when the youngsters are going, they might be be a young person and dealing with us. Like who would be working there? Like would it put that staff to be like similar age? Or what are the menus that young people's food that should be on in the country? What do you think? Yeah, I think like maybe because like in these current times like the uh, like food has kind of like everything. Like, it's changed over time. So like so there should be different types of food. So maybe, like, do you use any food hacks in, in how you cook? Uh, do, you, do you have any kind of special tricks for cooking? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do a special one. So I'm it's not what boring food. Sometimes it's a special one. Okay. 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 I mean, are, are there any kind of, do, do you have like a signature dish or, or, or anything? What do you think about this idea of a young person's cafe? What kind of menu do, would you kind of see there? Healthy food, unhealthy food? Yeah, I don't have healthy food there, I prefer all this. My son and my family and my husband, they all here actually make food. Every day we try, just try, which one is good for, good for health. I mean, this dish. Uh, they don't eat uh, rich food, all of them. Okay, so uh, uh, Martha, are you, are you going? I'm going to make a move. Okay, give us your final. Oh, uh, well, fair enough. You need to go and check it out before it closes. Give us your final thought. What are you going to come away with? Well, it's nice tonight. The way you discipline the child is well. It's all tight. Well, people are lovely. It wasn't so cute. It wasn't so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was at the back of the lake and oh, it was up at the night. When we get talking to friends our own age, they remember us. <laughs> okay, so it's something to reminisce about yeah, even though it was so a little bit painful. Uh, nice to know if there is a difference from this. But, Thank you so much, Martha. And uh, yeah, chat to Larissa very quickly, and then uh, off, off you go. Oh, Enjoy. I've got to more so now. Then, welcome back, welcome back. Are you guys go. Give us your kind of. Are you not going to stay? You can uh, go around and just go and chat. Oh, let's have a look now. Oh, yeah. Please, actually, come back. Have a sit down. Have a sit down. Have a sit down. We're just going to do round of things we've got. Um, so if you're still in your um, if still in school, like, still in your studies, because like you may they may fail, out, and even if you don't think you're gonna have a career, like the thing you gotta do, like the skills you learn from them will ultimately be on Okay, actually, that's what somebody said before, like school. Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the final thought. Okay, thank you very much. Just for stopping. Uh, okay, let's get some uh, uh, names. Who's ready to go? Uh, Nina, 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 Cake stall was brilliant. The cake, um, kids, you can make cake in that um, barn over there. That was good. I, I found that you can do. And they was asking us, how would you feel if this was open longer? And, and that's the kind of question that we're asking. I thought it's brilliant. And now there is something, hopefully, it's done. So sometimes it's getting, if it's an overflow or something, that people at the house. Which is what we kind of started off by talking when you were there at the very beginning. So yeah. making cakes stay open like uh, just get out of the house. Uh, what's your name? Anya. Anya. And we've got Martha still. We've got uh, Louise. Louise and Marga. And this is Tokioki. Uh, so at the moment we were talking about lots of different things. And actually it is actually you guys on the outside table. Even Richard, because I know you he can hear me. Uh, he's got a back uh, to decide on the uh, on the direction of the conversation. But Anya, what were you? Uh, no, Anya. No, Anya. Uh, you met us at the barn. You met, yeah, the barn. Uh, what brings you here? What have you been doing? Uh, my mum's friends are like the kind of help brothers, such as Mandy and stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my mum and my little brother here just have fun and get us out of the house because the summer has been boring. Oh my gosh. So the summer has been boring. I mean, like. It's uh, not time like for young people. Like, so I'm going to be a part of that site for the kids. 
did buy first, the I tried. So I got someone who was like younger, the Shrek loves are younger, and then people who were like older just like you. It's supposed to be more like exciting, so they could have like, say, moving day, say, like a tennis day or something that the child would like, and make it like a book so that like, book lit could say, this is open, and then go with the kids out. And then we want information on LinkedIn going on just to kind of come back to boredom. But I'm not going to to everyone else and everybody's like, is boredom bad? Is boredom bad? Why? Um, I suppose you know, and then should that be why? You know, maybe we should never really be bored because there's always something to do, always something to think about, imagination, etc. etc. Et Okay, so open up more, more questions for us, like what is boredom, uh, and yeah, look, what is boredom? Boredom is just this feeling where you feel like you're, you're not doing anything, and you feel kind of, I don't know, kind of sad about it, kind of in a way, especially for kids, kids can get really bad. Okay, so boredom is like when well, you're not doing anything. Yeah, it, it's compact mental health. It can come like compact time and all that if the child gets in that kind of trouble. Yeah. I mean, like, because we were talking about motivation before, and we were talking about what gets people out of the house, and you were encouraged by your mum. Yes, the mum. Yeah. So, uh, and, and you, you already knew the set. Are you very good at flyers? Yeah. I'm sat here ready to watch a I kind of wonder, like, whether whether it's okay just to get people like so bored out of their mind. They they, they just like, do, then they have to do something. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's like a good kind of engagement mechanism, it's like when they go home, um, uh, yeah, so just kind of like boredom pens. Just get people like cornered in a boredom pen for three days, let them out and then they'll be... What do you think of that? I think it'd be quite funny actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, hello, welcome to Tukuki. This is a pop-up talk show. Uh, we have been going here since 12 o'clock. And at the moment, actually, as it happens, we were talking about boredom. Because uh, Emma here said that summer has been really boring. And then Larissa, they get what is boredom. It's like more, it's like an open book for kids. So if you plan to open this a bit longer, you know, like activities for the summer. At the moment, at Shagwell, where we're like, they've got like a whole like some of the activities. I don't know if you thought that from your diary, but on Chadwell. Right. Look on your mum's your mum's got a computer at home. Look on Shadwell.org.uk and then there's activities this summer for you guys to do. So like on Friday you've got some smash arts and that and then on the last of this time, but next year if we can come with some diets or something. Has become a transgender. So, uh, thanks a lot because that's actually really good, good tips and also how to get the word out about stuff that's happening uh, around here. And in the meantime, if you're enjoying this, this is a, just a harmless talk show, really. Uh, and the way it works is just uh, I've got this microphone and a spinny chair and I spin around and new faces. Well, that's kind of how it works. Uh, as we've got new faces around the table, I'm going to get some names. Uh, what's it called? Lutpa. Lutpa. Shaz. Jess. Okay. I mean, have you, have you felt pretty creative recently? Well, you, I mean, 
Were you bored recently? Is that something that you have experience recently? Yeah, I mean, I think it, I think one can actually be very active and at the same time quite bored with what one does. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Talk us through it. What what could that? What does it look like? I think things one does have to be meaningful. Right. And if you just find you're doing a lot of kind of very repetitive things or things that are quite disconnected from who you are, what you are, or where you are, then you know you can, can be quite disengaging. Sometimes. Okay. And, and so I think one needs to look for things that have meaning and emotional attachment. Right. Okay. So it's very interesting what you're saying. Um, they can be changed. They can change the batteries as well because they're quite catchphrase today because you don't want to run out of batteries. Um, but what you're saying actually links back a little bit to what we were talking uh, maybe about an hour ago. And it was about teaching, it was about teachers. And the consensus on the table was that the passion in teachers has gone because they're not enjoying what they're doing. And then they're passing on this kind of like passionless, you know, experience to the, the, the people, uh, you know, the students. So it's all kind of a bit like that. But you're saying like you have to really believe in what you're doing. You have to be Excited that you have to enjoy yourself, okay? so then you won't be bored as well. Uh, I'm just basically spinning out what you said, but uh, yeah, that's right. I'm paraphrasing heavily there. Yeah. Uh, but I think there is something about um, you know spending meaningful time. Do, do you guys feel like you're spending uh, your life doing meaningful things, or is it sometimes a little mundane, kind of boring for the wrong reasons? I think. Um, Experimenting with different things and trying new things is important to, uh, to like discovering things about yourself. You know, sometimes you're, you're in a routine and just do the same thing over and over and over again. But maybe like you've got that time to sit back and think, what else can I do? I haven't tried maybe, or were they reading a different book? You know, I usually read like um, sci-fi type books, you know, mythical type books. Maybe I'll read a documentary and see how that is. You know, or not, you know, like. Or, you know, like I, I remember like I, I started a pickling project at World of Home Pickling Project. I wanted to try something new, and for me that was meaningful. It was very nice people. Okay, yeah. 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 so yeah. top star reviews as well. Yeah. 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 Which is this is starting a pickling project. Do you know what you're trying to pick up? Uh, not a pickling project. Maybe, um, so me and my mother started the flower crescent flower. I mean, what was it about flower pressing? Is that just something that, like, what, what is it about it? No, I just think it's really nice that like, she's found something that she really likes doing, and maybe that was also out of our order. Like, as Jess mentioned, you don't know, but it's really nice to know that there are things that you're passionate about. Yeah, okay. I heard about flower, like, the thing that I like about, like,
I really enjoyed listening to people today and hearing what's been happening in people's lives. Other than that, I really love having face paintings. It's my first time ever getting face paintings done, so, and I'm a 31 year old. I've never had face paintings. I'd like to thank you for having this uh, face painting because it makes me happy as well. It's just not something you expect to see, and then you see things brilliant. But what, what, what have people been saying? What is the kind of why on the street shops? Um, we've uh, spoken a lot about how people are struggling with cost of living about at home and um, just wanting a warm home, they're scared about winter um, and wanting to be connected to people in the community. So I think having, yeah, yeah. So I think like people feeling that being connected to people in the community just makes it just that a little bit more easier and, um, and not fear life. Um, so that's been actually quite tough to listen to, but it's been I feel grateful to have heard that. So I'm looking forward to sharing that to um, wider organisations of people to see how we can actually support our community. Connected. There are some fears that are about very real things. Uh, so seems to be really uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, sorry, I only joined one class now, so I didn't. But um, I really enjoyed watching people in Zumba. It was so amazing uh, to see their smiles. I think you were there, class. They were smiling, they were so enthusiastic, and everyone was just getting into it. And I was just like, that's the 15 year old in me. <laughs> I was really nice to see that. I just thought it was so lovely. And I, I haven't seen something like this after. Like, well, there's no such thing as body color because we need it. But it was just so nice. So it's good to see people kind of getting active in here, just doing something. So, I mean, is that one sort of the things that should be happening there? Uh, should there be funding available? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think um, also like the public spaces, like dancing happening out and about. So then you can see it. Dance is just so joyful. Who doesn't like to do it? Who doesn't like to watch it? Okay, compulsory dance, uh, please. Just so that I'll get funny to make everybody dance in the country. Yeah, I think the dancers are really good because I've been struggling with anxiety. I go to uh, music classes with my friends. It really helps me. Even though I'm still struggling, I'm getting through it a lot easier now. Okay, so that's really, really brilliant. So what is it about the activity? Like, what, what do you do in your musical theatre? What do you get yourself involved with? Like, there's dance routines, there's acting classes, and there's uh, like classes on how to do TV. Okay, so film TV, acting, uh, uh, and, and dancing, uh, Louis? Yes. I never... I was a trumpet player. I was a trumpet player. Okay, would you would you say that trumpet playing has the similar benefits to dancing? Would you make it compulsory for everyone to try trumpet playing? I love playing. I love playing every day. Every every day. Every and I always go to music. Okay. And I enjoy every second. Okay. Actually, music has been a feature on the Stupid Table. Uh, were you there when we were talking about holding a band? Were you there? No. Okay. Suddenly, I, I realized that in this era, there's a lot of people who can play instruments. I was like, shocked. Yeah, there there is is Hello. I'm loving your t shirt as well. I was admiring earlier. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, in the yeah. green you've been yesterday, so... Okay, so that's why you're wearing it. Uh, yes. Do people generally know how you're wearing it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be music, etc. And my daughter was born in the room, but it's a special Shall we just kind of wrap it up? I just wanted to ask you, have you got any thoughts, any, uh, anything that you wanted to be going home, thinking? I think it's just really lovely that we've seen so many families here. Um, so, uh, mums, dad, ch dads, and children. It's uh, really beautiful. And the community coming out. It's almost like um, after rains, the community's blossoming after the pandemic and they're trying to get together. So, it's really lovely. Um,
and uh, mashallah is continuing. And, and also, it was raining this morning, but we still came out and see people here the first time. And I mean, uh, are there many people in this area? I don't know if there are many people in this area. One thing I will say, I mean, I, I grew up here uh, many, many, many years ago. So it's always been a home for lots of different people from different, basically lots of people, so much child. So I mean, it's, um, we've always kind of looked out for each other. You know, this is the worst time, more that is common to all of us. Okay. Then there was a difference, so um, that's why I still feel enough for me. What's your name? What have you got your name? My name is Abifemi Shikoya. Abifemi Shikoya. Yeah, right. So Abifemi, uh, thank you for actually bringing this back because uh, at the very beginning, and you were there for this, uh, Sarandar, we have been talking about how diverse this place is and how people just look out for each other. Yeah, so it's really, really lovely to kind of come back around um, to this subject. Uh, it is a really mixed community and yeah, it sounds like, yeah, it's all good. Uh, okay, so uh, you work up to stay, you want to go uh, and live your life and uh, eat well, ice cream. I'm, you know, I'm like the behest of my daughter. Yeah. I tend to do whatever I'm told by her. So. Yeah, that's fair enough. We were talking about freedom uh, earlier and uh, a lot of own choices, and I just feel like your choices are very much kind of uh, where you're going to go is going to depend on her, basically. So your choices are yeah, it's curated. It's a family day, so. Fantastic. Well, listen, have you enjoyed the rest of your family day? Yes, you can. Uh, I'm really excited about your musical theatre classes. Uh, okay, finally, I've come back round uh, for final thoughts. Any, yes, final thoughts for you, sir? Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. I, I, I think I, what I particularly enjoyed today is that I haven't seen it for a long time. And some people who I've seen ever seen on the street, who I've, you know, who I've been having meetings with for the last few years, but never actually physically met. So that's been really nice. Yeah. So it's been so, uh, yeah, really lovely to see you here. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, there's always that sort of thing. Yeah. You don't necessarily always recognise people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so finally, we're going to pass the Kaiser Chair to you. Thank you so much for stopping by and getting involved and enjoy the rest of today. Uh, and I've had a few shots uh, switching from online to real life. Uh, but uh, yeah, it sounds like it's been a really good day. Any, any final, 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 final thoughts? Thank you very much. Hello, what happened to your elbow? Um, I bring was... her back. I was riding my bike, um, and then suddenly, I just don't know what happened. I was, I was probably leaning to the side to get smashed, and then boom. Oh, I'm sorry about you. You're wearing this plaster like a trooper. I think uh, you're very, very brave and well done for surviving that. Uh, and, you know. and the same thing happened. Uh, and something happened on my knee as well. Oh, do you remember what it was? Yeah, and, and the same thing happened on my knee. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
does the I think that will make you a better cyclist. Isn't that what you will know. And you're also, you know, wizard in training. also a wizard in training, aren't you? Okay. Yeah. Well, you can do any magic tricks? Maybe soon, maybe at some point. Uh, guys, actually, we're, we're just like finishing now. Uh, oh, I would have loved we should to bring you back again. Yeah, yeah all right. Bring you back again. I am, back I'm up again. for it. I'm up for it. Uh, but meanwhile, I can't remember when our next gig is. But, oh, I know when it is. Is it happy though? I don't know if you're going to be happy. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we're going to be uh, just off Newton Street. It's a. Uh, uh, God, where are we? Wait, 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 wait. Whitmore Community Centre, we're going to be there. Uh, we have a lovely community centre. Yeah, just go on the website and you'll go to in upcoming events. You'll see where we are going and then we're in West London and then, then we're in Lancashire and then we're in the Netherlands and then you know, we just collapse and have a holiday maybe. Or not, okay, who knows. Uh, well, thank you everyone, give yourselves a round of applause. Hey. 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 Which free one? I have the... Um, Dumbledore's ones, and Bob's. They're stickers. Oh, they're stickers. 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 They're stickers.